Hey, welcome back y'all. Jason and Michelle here, Echo Nesters, and we got Bad Betty with us. Bad Betty is our 2022 Winnebago Echo. She is built on a Ford Transit all-wheel drive chassis. Those that have been following along with us and subscribing to the channel are familiar with some of the upgrades Bad Betty has, uh, has gone through or that we've done. And those are just now looking at our videos. We're going to hope that you're subscribing and that the information that we have can help you make informative decisions and or just learn something. And at the same point, you're leaving us comments. Maybe you can teach us something as well. Definitely looking for more knowledge on our own as well. So without further ado, Bad Betty sitting here, as you can see, probably looks a little bit more different than you might expect stock out of a Winnebago Echo. So we'll start with the Ford Raptor grill. We noticed that Freedom Van Gogh was carrying these. They ran them on their rigs, loved it. Went ahead and made the order, brought it in, and were completely satisfied with it. Direct fit, good quality. I can say that I was in the automotive industry for about 15 years, and you can tend to tell what's garbage and what's not. Top of the line piece here, excellent quality. Second thing you see here is this big recovery package right here. This is by CA Tuned Off-Road out of California. Those that are familiar with some of the van life stuff and upgrades that are going on, you'll notice that these are all over the Sprinter market. Mercedes Sprinters, I mean, I see them going up and down the road. Well, I started saying, you know, what could we do here that would look sexy, if you will, really good on Bad Betty. And so I contacted CA Tuned. They were in the final development of this for the Ford Transit chassis. So we drove on down, met with Max and the team. That's in one of our videos. Finalized the R&D on it got her bolted on and we couldn't be more happy. It's also accompanied with the 12K or 12,000 pound worn winch as you see here. And we've got the Mad Max D shackles. We'll talk more about this whole recovery package probably in another video. The other thing you might notice if you're familiar is Bad Betty seems like she's sitting a little bit more off the ground than stock and you're absolutely right. Bad Betty also went undergo, I should say underwent a suspension upgrade. It's a Van Compass suspension upgrade. I like to call it the Topo 2.0. And that kit includes, as you can see here, a front spring, uh, a couple other goodies that go in here and some brackets. But just summarize, we stayed with the stock um, strut assembly. You can upgrade to a Bilstein. There's a lot of conversation on that. I'm not going to get into it right now, but there are folks running it. I'm sure you can find lots of video on that. Also, as part of the package, it has the adjustable Falcon rear shocks. It's going to be a little hard to see inside there, but maybe Michelle can get just a sneak peek there. Um, we love the whole package. We immediately, through going through some of the settings and playing with it, found what spoke to us. Um, much more stable. Everything about it was exactly what they said, so my hats go off to uh, Van Compass for this kit. Well engineered. So this video is really about tires. And as you notice here, these have a much more aggressive look than what would have come on here. So we'll take a step back and talk about what did Bad Betty slash the Ford Transit with the Winnebago Echo come with? What well, came with a 205 7516, I call it an all weather or all season tire. It was size load rated for the vehicle, met all the manufacturer's specifications, everything was fine with it. We rode that tire for a while, um, didn't have any real complaints, but we wanted something a little different and more aggressive for our needs. And kind of talking about what our needs are, this tire is capable of, of doing more than we're probably gonna get into, but mostly we live in Oregon, and in Oregon we get a lot of rain. Uh, in the winters we can get anything from snow, ice, different things happening. We travel I-84 quite a bit, that's Interstate 84, and those familiar, you're going through Hood River, the Dalles, and you're headed east. In the winter, you can get an immediate change in temperature, snow, ice, lots of rain, and so we needed a tire that could manage those conditions for us because that's a lot of what we do. We also wanted a tire, as I said earlier, that had more aggressive stance and look and wanted to upsize it. Now, this tire happens to be a 225 75 16. You can see that marking right here. We'll get more into what that aspect ratio and that, that size means, but I want to talk a little bit more about the technology of the tire without kind of getting too boring. It has an aggressive lug pattern, as you can see here, designed for this all-terrain. 
It's continuous sipes. They're actually true deep sipes. Those sipes right there, and we'll get into that, are going to help in controlling things on wet pavement, etc. The other thing that you might notice about Bad Betty's tire upgrade is that there's a bunch of other markings on here. I mean, obviously, we've got the brand name. It says it's the Wild Peak AT All-Terrain. Then we got AT3W, All-Terrain 3Ws. That W times three, if you will, has to do with Falcon saying this tire is not only good in wet, but different weather, and it's got an excellent wear pattern. When I say wear pattern and life, they, they say 55,000 miles out of this tire. I believe them, of course, road conditions, how you rotate, um, keeping uh, proper air is going to have a lot of factors on that. We're probably not going to keep the tire 55,000 miles. We'll begin to change, go with newer upgrades but I'm confident in the technology of this tire. Now, I have other tires. I want to just kind of throw that out there. I have some KO2s on another rig. I love them. They're doing everything they're supposed to do. A little bit more noisy, but I can't say that it's an apples to apples comparison because they're two different rigs. The other one on our Sprinter that we have is the Hankook. It was a Dynapro AT, and that's been a great tire for that Sprinter. It's uh, rated just like this. It's a 10 ply. It's E-rated, um, and you'll notice down here, we might as well talk a little bit about that right now. They have a load range here, E. That basically means that this tire is a 10-ply tire. And as you do your research and you're talking with the folks that may be selling you a tire, if you're going to buy them online, you just want to make sure that that rating is there, that load rating for this vehicle. You'll also notice in here that we got a 115-112 rating. That is also a load index rating. We can talk more about that later. I would say um, I was on the internet and Tire Rack has an excellent chart that you can download, look at. It's a PDF as well, print it and learn everything probably that you'd ever want to know and not know about that. But again, most importantly, load index, E-rated, 10-ply tire, critical for a vehicle of this size. These are about 11,000 GBW. Now, let's talk about 205 versus 225 the 75 number and the 16 number. When we take this number, whether it's 225 or 205, that's 225 millimeters of width from here to here. That's the width of the tire. The 75 right there is the sidewall ratio, if you will, aspect. So that means that this is 75% of this number here, 225, which again would apply if you had a 205 75. So this tire obviously is going to gain height based on the fact that this number, the 225, is greater. I hope that kind of made sense, but again, we can break it down. Um, I can include little links, etc. 16 is the diameter of the wheel and the diameter of the tire that's going to fit. Some of the other things when you're looking at tires is look for some of the technology that not only has to do with the sipe, the all-terrain, weather conditions that you're going to be going through, but also this little rim or ridge that you see here, believe it or not, that's just not there for looks. It's actually a cooling feature designed for this tire. And again, you can learn more about that stuff. So again, we wanted something with a little bit more aggressive look. We wanted to get some height out of the tire. But more importantly, what I was looking to accomplish for us is what could we put on here without making a bunch of modifications? So, let's say that we went with a 245 75 16 tire, um, which has been done. Uh, it's out there. There's nothing wrong with doing it. What would that mean? Well, as that tire increases in its width, we might come into some areas where we've got the pinch seam right here, and you could trim that. Lots of folks do it. I've done it in the past on other vehicles. Doesn't bother me. It's not a concern. The other thing to keep in mind is on dualies, as you continue to increase the width of the tire, meaning we're making this number uh, right here, the 225 continue to climb, and this number, let's just say, stays the same for our height. As that tire gets wider, somewhere in here these tires might touch. Now, I've got my hand all the way in between there. i got pretty fat fingers, so that should give you some clue. So you don't want those tires getting close together. They could chafe. They start to chafe. They create wear. There's friction. You could have a blowout. Now, how do you get around that? There's spacers that they develop for these. 
they're out there. They work well. Lots of folks are using them. I almost went that route. I can't say I didn't go that route for any bad reason. I was just looking like, how can we set Bad Betty up in a way that if somebody had the same vehicle, they could do this. I have some experience going through it, and maybe I could answer some questions, and they don't have to be nervous about spacers. I was in the automotive industry for over 15 years, doing suspension and tuning upgrades, a bunch of stuff. We use wheel spacers all the time and had no issues with them. Obviously, I'm sure you can make a mistake, get a poor quality one, something could go wrong, but my experience has been positive. As a matter of fact, I think Grant Wilson at Freedom Van Gogh kind of shares with people what they've used, the brand they use, why they're using them, his experience. He's got tons more knowledge than me, but he's ran several of these rigs. He's got a new project vehicle out there. So if you're looking to really push some extremes, Again, just giving them a plug, Freedom Van Gogh, you can learn a lot. I get a lot of info from their team as well. So back to our tires. So Shell and I, what do we do with our vehicle? We go to the beach, we get out there in the sand. Uh, we don't get too crazy. Um, we like to go camping. We like to get out in the, let's call it the terrain. We definitely love Eastern Oregon and the terrain that you see here. We just happen to be at a Harvest Host site. Um, here just outside of Walla Walla on our way to Pullman and to see the Palouse Falls. So these tires and the way we have it set up spoke to our lifestyle. Now you can get a tire that is a, let's call it an all season tire. It's gonna do well in most conditions. The thing that I would be careful about is not getting confused necessarily with, hey, it's an all season tire. I can get out there and I can jam into the snow and boy, howdy, everything's gonna be great. I've got an all wheel drive, you know, what's stopping me? You need to be careful on that because mud and snow, three peak mountain symbol, similar but different. Um, also, one of the things that we got when we started posting some pictures of this was questions about road noise and how's it handling and what did we get so we've gone about 300 miles on these so far plus minus we hit i-84 we started going east lots of wind hit some rain lots of semis and i have to say um, and i'm gonna let michelle chime in here in a moment but not only did this thing ride well track well i couldn't even tell you that i hit a puddle in the water a rut in the road rain had zero effect but michelle and i were cruising down the road and there's a particular area on i-84 where would you say it gets noisy yeah rattles a little yeah rattle yeah. shake we hear a lot of road noise mm -hmm. and we were literally driving down the road and realized how quiet it was and i'm thinking why is this so quiet um i've got these knobby tires all train tires in theory this is supposed to be louder um something doesn't seem right so we did a quick little video on our instagram i believe where we just kind of listen. Now we didn't have a decibel meter, so there's no science that I'm trying to prove here, but I'd say this, these are quieter tires than our hand kooks. Oh, I, far. yep, I don't know why, <laughs> doesn't make <laughs> sense, <right? laughs> but I was shocked and surprised. Um, we were able to have a different conversation in here. I know some people have said, man, it's noisy in the cab. There's a lot of folks trying to figure out how to quiet them down and add insulation. The reality is you got a van cab here. Somebody put a box on it. This thing's probably going to be a little noisy overall. They've done the best that they can in theory of insulating the floor, getting up into the cab area there. I mean, the list kind of goes on. I probably wouldn't tear the whole inside apart. I know we're kind of drifting here, but we're still talking about road noise, the tires. There's not much you're going to get around. There's wiring harnesses in there. I think a whole day adventure is just not worth it. My opinion only though, but if you find something different, share it, I'd love to know. So as you walk around Bad Betty again, I think she's looking good. Van Compass Lift. We've got the Wild Peak Falcon tires here. Lots of brands out there, like I said, do your own research. We've got our CA Tune Recovery Package, Raptor Grill. We got an oil separation can in here. We're gonna be doing some other mods to the inside that we hope to share with you. But if you have any questions, you got comments, you got ideas, um, something you'd share with us, please do leave those comments, talk to us. Um, we're very approachable, I'd like to think, and uh, looking forward to sharing some other stuff with you. So stay tuned for Bad Betty. She's going to continue to have good adventures, and hopefully you can share them with us. Thanks for joining us. Hey, everyone. We wanted to drop this in the middle of our tire review. We are on I-84 headed east. This is a pretty typical, typical route for us. It's just coming out of the gorge. We've left Portland. We're headed towards Walla Walla, Washington. 
And as Michelle's kind of give you an idea what the road looks like, you can see it's pretty windy out here. This road is not perfect. There's nothing great about the pavement here. We're cruising at 60 miles an hour. And the reason I wanted to interrupt it here is I'm going to silence down here in a moment. But Michelle and I were just driving along and we just really realized there's a crazy improvement with these tires. Again, we went from the 205 7516 hand coupes that come stock on the 2022 Winnebago Echoes. And we upgraded to the Falcon Wild Peak AT3s, which is a 225 7516. And we're going to get into more details about that. More aggressive tire, a lot of different things going on here. But what I would have expected is that this tire would have been a little bit noisy. We would have felt more of the road. Complete opposite has just happened. We're cruising along, we're in the cab here, and it's pretty quiet. So I'm gonna silence down as Michelle drifts the phone around and see what you pick up and notice. Well, there you go. We don't have a decimal meter obviously hooked up. You're just gonna have to trust the audio, but those who have one of these, those that are familiar, you're gonna know that typically this cab is pretty noisy and now it's not. So that's just one of the many things that we notice and we're loving about the new tires. I got a ton more to share. And just for the record, we're not sponsored by any particular tire company. This was just a choice Shell and I made after doing some research. So stay tuned for the rest. Well, here we go. Bad Betty's about to go get her surprise. She'll come back just looking good. There you go, bad Betty. You're in the doctor's hands. She's about to go in.